Welcome to First Methodist Church as we gather for this service of worship. Today is the day of Pentecost. It's the church's birthday. It's the day that the Holy Spirit came down upon those uh, disciples uh, and breathed fire and life into them. The Holy Spirit, the tongues of flame coming down and, and just really gave them an impetus to go out and to share the good news that day. And today we gather uh, to remember and what the Holy Spirit has done for the church, uh, working in concert with uh, uh, Jesus Christ who sent the Spirit in uh, to share all the truths that had been given to Jesus himself, that had been given by the Father to Jesus Christ. And so today we gather to worship and celebrate. You know, I, I, I read a couple weeks ago uh, when I was reading about the uh, ascension of Jesus Christ, there was a, uh, a Baptist pastor uh, working for uh, Lifeway who said, you know, the ascension of Jesus Christ ought to be like the third most holy day within Christianity, uh, along with the birth of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, because the ascension reminded us that Jesus went back to be the Father to intercede with us. And if we believe that the ascension of Jesus ought to be one of those top holy days of the year, just celebrations then Pentecost is right up there as well because that's the day that we came to know the spirit that dwells within us. Uh, there are uh, a few announcements I want to share with y'all this morning, uh, and then we will begin our worship. Uh, first of all, camp and uh, UM Army are registration are still ongoing. VBS is just right around the corner. Uh, if you would like to help with VBS or like to get sign, sign your uh, children or grandchildren up, uh, now's the time to start doing that. You can find that on the inner uh, prayer concern sheet here. Also, we are in the middle of uh, peanut butter and jelly time, so uh, the UMW are collecting these staples for our mission Carthage to share with people in need here in the community. Uh, and then finally, I want to let you all know we will not have Bible study this coming week, but we will uh, either Wednesday morning or Wednesday evening, but you can still get your books in the office uh, if you'd like to do that for the 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. adult Bible study on the book of Romans. Uh, and then one more finally, I want to invite Paula Carter up to share with us about book blessings, which just occurred a week ago, uh, and it took us a little while to get all the, the uh, pictures and, and final uh, results from that, but she wants to share with that with you now. In a second, we're going to see a video that Bethany did, and it is fantastic. She did a wonderful job on that. But let me just kind of round up book blessings for you, uh, and also to let you know what, what you can be doing, because we now have a whole year. As he said, it was over last week, but now we have a whole year to prepare. Thanks go out to everybody in Panola County, especially the uh, churches, Mount Zion and Bethel and Deadwood and Rehoboth and of course our congregation. And then on top of all of that, to God be the glory. Because as I said, we just do this and things happen as they should. Jaretta said that the cost of the books and the bags this year, that's the the two books that every child received and the book bag that everybody received, and then about a thousand books that were bought for the book fair. The cost of all of that was $10,372. I know it kind of took my breath away when she said that. <clears throat> However, she said that we paid for all of it and had a nest egg for next year. I didn't ask her how big that nest egg was, but I am assuming it's a dinosaur egg. But just in case it's a little bitty Benny type egg, then there are some things that we can do. There were a thousand books purchased by the Book Blessings Committee, and then we had 2,500 books donated. Um, 
every student in every school in Panola County that was a public school received two books, and the students from Carthage received seven books. If we do what we say we're going to do next year, which is to invite all four of these schools to the book fair, and every student receives seven books, then we're talking about 4,900 books for next year. Plus, if you want the last kid to have as good a choice as the first kid had of books, you need about 1,000 books over that so you've got the choice. So that is our challenge for next year. The good news is we do have about uh, uh, well, we do have a year to do this. If you take the figures that Jaretta gave me, that works out to about $15 a kid, plus counting on donating donated books as well. $15 a kid. So every once in a while this year, when you think book blessings, and I hope you'll think it often, $15 will will take care of a child. You have a year that if you have $5 just burning a hole in your pocket, Book Blessings is a great place to spend that $5. If you want to make a donation in memory or honor of someone, that would be great. Uh, another thing is donate books. When I bought books this year, for my donation, I went to the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree sells books for a dollar, just like everything else. I went to HEB, they had books that were a dollar. I went to Dollar General, they had books that were a dollar. And then I went to Goodwill and they had books that were 90 cents. <laughs> so if you happen to be these places, the kids loved the books. They especially loved Disney. So if you see a Disney book, know that some little kid will love that. They liked Dr. Seuss books. Evidently, they didn't get the memo that that wasn't good anymore. <laughs> they loved Dr. Seuss. Chapter books, and we're not talking chapter books, we're talking chapter books but they felt so good, especially those first graders felt so good about having a chapter book to read. And then the other one that may surprise you is they nearly cleaned out the religious books. They were just drawn to them. In fact, the day before we had the, the, the last kids coming. I went to Dollar Tree and just cleared out their religious books. Yes, that's about the Bible. I took them all. And we had very few of those left. We were really amazed. There was one little boy that got a Bible. It was a youth Bible of some sort. He showed it to every human being that he came in contact with. And he would bend over and pull it out of his bag and go, Look what I got, look what I got. So this certainly is a blessing for literacy, but all of us who are sitting in here know that there's another kind of blessing going on as well. So, y'all ready to show? Well, no. I've got to make an apology because we didn't get the video on today. It'll be later today on Facebook and we'll show it next week during the announcement time. And it's great. And it's be sure you watch. It really is. So watch for that later today on Facebook. So if you're not, if you haven't been to our Facebook page, go to our Facebook page and you can, if you find a, if there's a sermon that you really like, you can go there and find them archived and um, keeps up with things that are happening in the church and we'll have that video, video on later today. Are there any other announcements? And see it live? Yes. Please come back and see it live. That's true. Let's prepare our hearts for worship.
let's stand as we sing. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me Forever, may the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smile. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be praising to the Lord in whom I rejoice. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the
this past week we welcomed back our um, Carthage High School golf team who went to state uh, and uh, you know as they say before just going to state is an honor unto itself they didn't win the top prize uh, but they went uh, and they represented uh, and we can say congratulations to Scott Lee as the coach uh, uh, and to um, Charlie Barber as, as one of the players on there and all the players. So um, if you know of things that happen to our church members, uh, that our church members are involved in, you know, pass those on. We want to celebrate uh, as our church members go through different uh, achievements and, and phases of life. So continue to share those. Uh, there are a few announcements I want to share with you These are, or, or concerns uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, of, of members of our church and others that are dear to us uh, before we go off in, into prayer. Uh, first of all, uh, Cheryl Townsend uh, had asked that we put her brother and sister-in-law uh, on our prayer list. Uh, uh, he had uh, fallen and needed surgery, and so we're going to continue to pray for them, uh, Larry and Ginger Rowell. And then also, uh, Keith Clark had... Uh, asked me to play Sheila Thomas Knight. This is his nephew's mother-in-law. Um, she was already undergoing cancer surgery and radiation and contracted COVID. And so it's been um, just a, a whole lot of issues going on. So we wanna to continue to pray for her. Uh, Phil, Philip Kruby had surgery yesterday. He had had surgery about a year and a half ago for his back continued to have some excruciating pain, and it was determined that he had infection in there, which was helping to cause that, as well as a loose screw, so they took the loose screw out. He's on high-powered antibiotics uh, and should come home in a couple of days. So we want to continue to pray for uh, Philip and, and for Lori uh, as, as she uh, and family as they continue to care for him uh, and nurture him back to health. Uh, let's now go to the Lord in prayer, and then I'll lead us together. Oh Lord, we gather this morning here on this birthday of the church when we remember you sent in the Holy Spirit, the promise you had made to the disciples uh, that you would bring them power from on high. And, and now here we are gathered together, uh, Lord, uh, remembering that and, and, and both wondering within our own hearts what is in store for us. Each of us gathered here individually known by you and yet you have brought us together because we are the body of Christ together and none of us uh, is destined or should live alone but should be living in community with one another because that's how you had arranged your church and arranged us to walk in faith that we might do it together but Lord, for each of us, because we are individuals, you've given us each individual gifts, none greater than the other, but nonetheless, each of us to be used to edify and to grow the body. And so Lord, uh, continue to work in us, work in us to help us to identify gifts within one another, sometimes out of humility, sometimes out of uh, uncertainty, sometimes uh, just... Uh, out of uh, wondering, we, we still are unsure what gift it has been that you've placed upon us. But Lord, use the rest of the body to help us to understand. Let us have Sunday school class members and pew neighbors and other uh, people who walk in the Lord help us to unveil our own gifts. We might have been using them all along, and people might know them even when we don't know them ourselves. But Lord, help us to see how you have been working in us before we knew it. For Lord, when the Holy Spirit came down upon those disciples, they, they, they went from timid to courageous. They went from being together in an upper room to suddenly being out in the world testifying and, and just sharing your good news. Lord, use us to do so in all the ways that we can, empowered by your Holy Spirit. 
and help us to see those gifts in each other. Lord, we ask your blessing for the concerns of our hearts that uh, we have lifted up already. For Larry and Ginger Rowell, for Sheila Thomas Knight, for Philip Kruby, that you'll continue to be with each of them uh, as they recover from surgery. Lord, we ask your continued blessing for Amanda Grappe as she awaits her test results and, and continues her treatment. Lord, we ask your blessing for Debbie Jernigan as she continues uh, uh, her chemo treatment uh, and for Sandra Chamnus as she looks for answers uh, that would help bring her sight back fully. Lord, we ask your continued blessing for Frank Dorfeld um, just with his uh, uh, myriad of uh, health issues that Lord, uh, he would uh, find comfort and strength in you. Be with Rosemary as she continues to care for him. For we ask all these things in the name of Jesus who's taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master. you can unconditionally share your only son with all who believe in your name on this holy day receive our offerings as an affirmation of our commitment to be your faithful disciples strengthen our ability to be gifted stewards of your created world we pray in the name of the resurrected one jesus christ the messiah amen
Good morning. I'm so glad to see all of you here. It's wonderful to have you here. Did you notice all of the red and the gold and the decorations that are here? It's kind of like a party, isn't it? It looks like a celebration of some kind, doesn't it? Do you know what we're celebrating today? We're celebrating someone's birthday. We could be celebrating Jennings' birthday, but that's not who. That's not who. Do you know? Who's, whose birthday is it? It's the birthday of the church. Not just this church, but the whole church everywhere. The, fairy, the, the church. Um, this, I want to read you a little bit of the scripture that we're going to be using today. This says, when the day of Pentecost, that's the name of the, what we're celebrating today, when, at the, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rushing of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting divided tongues of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on them. Now, if, if some fire came down from heaven and landed here on my shoulder, I would be really afraid. I would be, oh my, I couldn't believe it. So does it sound like some pretty dramatic things were happening at this birthday party? Yes, yes, it does. And this is, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. So it's like Bennett here, does, do you know Spanish? or French, or German, or any of those? Do you know how to speak those languages? But, but it's like suddenly you could speak that language. That language you could speak, but even though I don't understand it, I could hear it in my language. It was crazy. It was so strange, all that was happening in here. So this is 50 days after Easter. This is 50 days after Jesus had died and been resurrected from the dead. He had come back and he had stayed on the earth for about 40 of those days. And remember we talked about that. We celebrated that last week, didn't we? When, the, when he, he went back to heaven and we talked about how the disciples were not excited about him going back to heaven, were they? They wanted him to stay right there with them. But he said he had to go back to heaven and was going to do that. So now, now, and what else did he? Okay, look, Anderson, look, would you, would you come sit down right over here? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, he told the disciples before he went, he said, I have to leave, but I'm sending you a comforter, someone to come and comfort you. And where is this comforter going to live? in your heart. He's going to live in your heart. He's coming. He's coming. You just have to wait. And Pentecost was when that Holy Spirit arrived. He came and all of these things were happening. Wind and fire and people being able to speak languages they didn't know and the other people in the room understanding them even though they didn't know the language either. So do you think he was making a pretty big entrance? I think he was. So, this is called the birthday of the church. But are there other days that could have been the birthday of the church? What about Christmas? What happened to Christmas when Jesus was born? Yes, he was born. Could that could that be a reason to celebrate? Yes. What about Easter? Could that could that have been the start of the church because that's what we celebrate is that he's not a dead Lord. He is a risen, living Lord. It is. But I think that the words of the very beginning of the scripture that says they were all together in one place. I think that's what's our key to the fact that this is the birthday of the church. Of the church. Could Jesus or could God have sent the Holy Spirit to everyone's house? 
instead of having them all together in one house? Could he have sent some to Carrington's house and some to Jennings' house and some to my house? Could he have, could he have sent the Holy Spirit to everyone's house? Sure, he could have. So why is it important that he sent it where everyone was gathered in one place? I think that's symbolic. I think that is he wants us to be gathered in one place as a group together. But is each individual member important? Yeah, yes. It's That's why we're called the body of Christ. We're called the body of Christ, and each one of us is given some gifts of the Spirit, some gifts that that Holy Spirit gives us and puts in us that no one else has exactly our same gifts, right? So, together we blend those gifts and we share those gifts for the good of just us or for the good of everyone. For the good of everyone. So you think God had a good plan about this? I think he did too. And he wants us to never stop meeting together. He said don't ever stop meeting together to come and to worship and to reach out to other people in the world. And he also, it said that the, his spirit descended like a dove. And so we see doves everywhere because they're a symbol of that. So... Let's pray and thank God for this birthday of our church. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity today to celebrate Pentecost and our ability to meet and worship with you and work together as your hands and feet in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have always, always, always loved taking the words of a song. Uh, you know, I was a music major in college, but, and I learned all the musical things that you do with the notes, but the words of some of the old hymns mean so much to me. His 
child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. His infinite mercy, his child, and forever. I... Amen. Thank you, Debs, for that. Uh, what a powerful introduction to our scripture this morning, which in and of itself is a powerful statement of what God has done in the church and is doing in our lives now. Would you please stand as you are able for the reading of God's word? And it comes from Acts, it's chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. We'll be looking a little broader than that, but this really gives you the... The, uh, the drama of the, of the scripture right here. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a flame appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound this crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Isaia, to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you please be seated? Oh, Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For, Lord, you are our rock and you are our redeemer. Amen. This past week, um, Ford Motor Company uh, announced that they have a new uh, electric pickup truck that's going to be on the market uh, come spring of 2022. 
you can already uh, place an order for it. Now, if you're a Chevrolet person, I'm sure GM's, well, I know GM's got some coming out, as do several other uh, startup manufacturers, um, uh, Riven and uh, Cybertruck and so forth. Electric trucks. Now, we can say what we will about um, where electricity comes from, whether it's burned in the actual tank of the, uh, of the truck or, or whether we get our electricity from some uh, of various energy sources out there. Right now we know most of our fuel, uh, most of our electricity is based off of fossil fuels uh, of one kind or another here in America. So that's, that's a whole separate uh, issue, environmentally, ecologically, whatever, however you want to talk about it, economically. But what's interesting I have found about the electric truck is because of the nature of generators versus motors is that you can get more raw power. You can get 100% of the raw power of a generator immediately when you press, I was going to say the gas pedal, but the pedal, right? 100%. So you get 100% of the torque, 100% of the horsepower when the uh, generator in that uh, vehicle or not the generator, but the, the battery puts it to the, the motors. Which makes it, Ford says, uh, if you get the, the larger of the two battery units in their electric trucks would make them the most powerful that Ford has to offer. So, so that in and of itself is interesting uh, that with electric truck, you could actually get one that is faster and more powerful than even gas models that we know about. Now, I, I think the diesel wars are still going on between, uh, particularly between Ford and Ram, and they've got them up to about a thousand horsepower and so forth. I don't think we're quite there with electricity yet, but could be for the right amount of money. But you get this raw power from electric vehicle. So that's the first thing. The second thing is Ford said, uh, well, because you don't have an engine in the front uh, and you've got battery packs just kind of lining the, the chassis underneath the cab, is you have extra room up front. And so they've named it the frunk. <laughs> the front trunk. Uh, and it can hold up to 400 pounds of additional stuff. So that's pretty cool as well. But, but then, then here's this other thing, which... Out of all those things, I, I don't really need more power. I don't really need more acceleration. I don't really need a frunk, right? I mean, I, I've always liked pickup trucks. I've always, uh, uh, whether diesel or, or gas or, or whatever. But the thing about the uh, electric truck that Ford was offering is that you can also use it uh, to power your home for several days if you run out of electricity, if you have the right setup on your home. You gotta have some kind of a inverter on your home. Uh, but the other thing is you could take it out to a work site and you could run uh, power tools off of your battery that runs your truck. Now, some of y'all are thinking, well, the battery only has so much electricity and now you've gotten to the heart of the issue that a lot of people have talked about, regardless of what it is, is range anxiety. How far can I go on the electricity before I run out? And then where do I have to go in order to get refueled or recharged or re-energized? Uh, because I had read one article that said there's like 46,000 gas stations out there in America. So, you know, we can get range anxiety if we're running on empty and we're out in West Texas, right? Or, or some other place where uh, towns are far apart. But I think I also read in that same article, there's about 1,500 known charging stations uh, for vehicles. That is, fast charging stations. Uh, and so the, the key is that uh, riders uh, and automobile enthusiasts and, and others have talked about is this range anxiety. You know, how far can you go before you need electricity and then how long does it take to fill up? Because if you do it off of a regular 110, it can take uh, 20 hours or more uh, to, to recharge. Whereas if you have one of these special charging stations, one of 1,500 across the U.S., they can do it in as little as 45 minutes to an hour which brings us all to this idea of what charges the church. 
what energizes us. And Jesus had, had, had been telling the disciples, you know, he says, you know, don't hold on to me, he said to, to Mary Magdalene, for I must go to the Father. But if I go, I will send to you, uh, you know, power from on high. Or, or as he said here at the very beginning of the book of Acts, uh, when he suddenly showed up to them, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. The promise that Jesus had revealed a get-go that I must return to the Father, but I will send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will bring you power from on high. And here he says this. He says, this, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And many days from now. And this is right at the beginning of Acts, which was written by Luke. But Luke said at the very end of his gospel, uh, he had also added these words. And you see, and as he was preparing to go back to the Father uh, uh, to ascend, he says, And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with Power from on high. So Jesus was clearly not just telegraphing. I mean, he was telephoning this in. He's saying, wait, this is coming. This is coming. Yes, you know, don't hold on to me as, as he was coming up, as he showed up uh, to Mary Magdalene and the others uh, on the day of resurrection. Don't hold on to me because I must go to the Father. And then over the next 40 days, what we find is he appears a numerous, numerous times uh, to the different disciples over 40 days. And then about 10 days later, we have the disciples all gathered for the Jewish feast of Pentecost. Now, before Pentecost was a, a Christian holy day, it was a Jewish holy day. And originally, it, it had been a time to celebrate the first harvest, first fruits, first grains. You would come and bring those in and, and, and celebrate and observe, give those back to God. But then later on, it, it became more of celebrating the giving of the law. So again, first fruits and first harvest, you know, a new way of, of living. And so the disciples were all gathered in Jerusalem for this wonderful event. An event to remember what God had done for them, not what they had done for themselves. Not some major uh, political uh, victory or, or military victory. Uh, it wasn't something uh, to celebrate themselves. It celebrated what God had done in the past. And they were doing this faithfully, and they were all gathered in that upper room, and Jesus had appeared to them. And he says, I will send the Holy Spirit, and it won't happen many days from now. And sure enough, within 10 days, because Pente being 50, and Pentecost was always 50 days after the Passover, but now it was 50 days after the resurrection. While they're gathering, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. This Holy Spirit, uh, the third person of the Trinity, the one that Jesus uh, had, had both uh, recognized as the dove coming down upon him in the middle of his baptism, when the Father said, this is my son, with him I am well pleased. And, and now this Spirit that continued to, to uh, lead Jesus out into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted and never gave in. This spirit that had nurtured him and cared for him, he had now sent amongst us to care for us and to nurture us. Jesus had said to the disciples, I will be with you always. And indeed he is. He's a, he has seated with the, the Father at the right hand and he intercedes for us. But we also know that, that he lives within us uh, and the Holy Spirit energizes us to do that. Fifty years ago, 53 years ago, the United Methodist Church was created. Fifty-three years ago, the United Methodist Church, our denomination, was created from the Methodist Church and from the Evangelical United Brethren, which was a uh, uh, historically German-speaking uh, Methodist uh, denomination. And these two denominations came together in historic uh, grouping in 1968, and they chose for their 
knew they, meaning our forebears, forefathers and mothers, uh, 60 years ago, chose for the new symbol for our denomination, the cross and the flame. The cross and the flame, which both reminded us of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, an empty cross, that he is not still upon the cross, but that he conquered both sin and death itself. So an empty cross, which reminds us what Jesus did for us, but also those two flames that come down. The flames reminding us both of the birth of the church, Pentecost, as, as the Holy Spirit came down upon us, but also reminding us of the two uh, parts of the church coming together, the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren, to give us the United Methodist Church. And that cross and flame logo has become a, uh, a wonderful sign throughout the world uh, and, and loved by so many, uh, particularly, uh, well, not particularly, but also, and, and in addition, outside the U.S. Because it has meant that UMCOR is there. It has meant that missionaries are there teaching the word and, and planting churches. It has meant uh, a connection to a worldwide denomination. We're a global denomination now. Uh, first started here in the U.S., but now around the world. And about 40% of the denomination is now in other countries, most of those in Africa, but also Europe uh, and the Philippines and in Asia. These flames, these tongues of flame coming down representing for us the church, but today as we read through the scriptures reminding us that out of one, uh, out of many there are one, that we, we gather together two denominations 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 50 years ago, uh, as well as each of us who come together. Uh, but we do that because of our belief in Jesus Christ. And we do that because the Holy Spirit began to encourage and strengthen and grow us together. Not just the United Methodist Church, but every church out there that traces its lineage back to this Pentecost. Out of many, one. That we're not called to be solo Christians, we're called to be together uh, growing up in a community that we might help one another, care for one another, learn from one another, and help each other to identify our gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. In the coming weeks, we'll be looking at, at both gifts that the Holy Spirit shares with us as, as well as fruits that become evident of that. But here on this day, the, the main fruit that became evident was what uh, Peter would share with us uh, in just later on in the chapter that suddenly he had a boldness, and indeed all of them had a boldness. There was 120 of them there that day, and by the end of the day, 3,000 had been added to their number because no longer were they uncertain, no longer were they fearful, no longer were they still waiting, but the Holy Spirit had come upon them and encouraged them and strengthened them. I liked how Kay asked the children, what they thought about, you know, a, a, a tongue of flame coming down on your shoulder. I, I'm, you know, I hadn't thought of that before, but I, I thought, yeah, I would be startled. But what I had thought about before was, uh, and then the sound came like a violent wind within, um, within the room. And I'm thinking, as this violent wind's coming down and, and the tongues of flame are coming on there, you know, we always know that wind pushes uh, fire around and yet somehow because of the supernatural activity that's going on, it was like the sound of a violent wind and it was within the building there with them in the room and yet the flames are able to come down supernaturally upon each one of them despite all this other activity going on reminding us that something special, unique, and otherworldly is occurring. Disciples who were gathered up there suddenly find themselves down in the courtyard and they're sharing and they're able to do so using languages that they had not studied before, which is why uh, Luke says uh, that it was said, you know, aren't these just Galileans? I mean, aren't they just from some backwater water here in, in Israel? How could they even know all these languages, let alone one of them, let alone, uh, 
and to know all these and sharing as if they know it. It was the work of the Holy Spirit, and we believe the Holy Spirit continues to push through us today to impel us, uh, to encourage us to share the good news by all the means necessary. And sometimes, and oftentimes, that has meant learning new languages that we might be able to, to cross cultural or language barriers. Uh, originally, 100 years, 200 years ago, that was to send missionaries out into other countries. But as we've had so many immigrants from so many different countries come into America, there's just as much need to, to share the good news around here. And oftentimes what we find, what we find is what missionaries shared 100 years ago in countries in Africa or Asia or in Europe they share the good news and, and churches are created uh, or missions are created and then churches uh, form and then children grow up there and some of those children become adults or their families become um, moved to America and they're already Christian. And we have found that sometimes, oftentimes, that we have missionaries here in America who came from families that had uh, been evangelized in prior generations in other countries and now those missionaries have become both pastors and missionaries here in the US because of our diverse, diverse culture we're always in need of sharing the good news with the next generation and with the newest neighbor that comes around Pentecost just reminded us both 2,000 years ago and today that that claim is still upon our lives and not just a claim but an opportunity and not just an opportunity but an opportunity with a promise that the Holy Spirit is with us and moving in us. Jesus had said to his disciples when he left them, and lo, I will be with you always. But he also said, I'm going to send a Holy Spirit, one who's going to bring you power from on high so that you're not bereft, but you can do even more than I did. And, and, and how is that possible when we think about how could we, any of us, each of us, do more than what Jesus did? It's only when we gather together in the name of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that each of us, as Jesus walked this earth, now we're walking this earth, and we can go and tell a friend who tells a friend who tells a friend. We continue to share the good news because it makes a difference for us. It makes a difference for us to know that whatever we're going through in life, whether it's a, a change in jobs, a, a, a change in relationship, a change in financial fortune, a change in health, a change in community, we know that God is with us. Jesus said that. His very name, Emmanuel, says that to us. Jesus said that at the end. And then he said, if I go, I will send the Holy Spirit who continues to advocate for us just as Jesus did. The Holy Spirit coming upon that day of Pentecost was the fulfillment of a promise that Jesus had made to his disciples. A promise that continues to work in and through each of us. And a promise that continues to unfold as, as we read through the, the writings of Paul and Peter. And as we continue on through the book of Acts, a promise that continues to unfold today. The Holy Spirit working in us ever since the birth of the church. Because now, we're no longer just individuals who believe in one God. We are now a family, the very body of Christ, as Paul says, gathered together for the glory of God. And we go out into the world to sh tell of that glory to others. Today, we have gathered to celebrate. Now we go out to share to share with words, to share with actions, uh, to share with our love and care for others. But we go out to share because it was not meant for us to hold on to, but to continue to send to the next generation and to the next neighbor we meet. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for your love, your love that has enabled us uh, uh, just to uh, continue to, to 
both enjoy what you've given us, but also to share with others, even when it makes us uncomfortable or fearful. But Lord, give us wisdom. Your Holy Spirit is so good at that, convicting our hearts, helping us to know what we need to do. And also, as we're reminded uh, through Peter, that the Holy Spirit gives words so that we don't have to be afraid. That we can say the words that you would have us say in ways that are comforting, hopeful, and helpful. But Lord, help us to be attentive. Help us to be attentive to the leading of your Holy Spirit so that we don't reflexively say no or, or walk away, but instead we listen to what you would have us do. And then, Lord, give us the words to share. Help us to be your people out in the world till all the world might know. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service is coming to an end, but our time of service and witness out in the world is about to begin. As we uh, stand up to sing our closing hymn, I just always offer this invitation. Uh, if you'd like to unite with this congregation called First Young Methodist Church of Carthage, or if you just want to know more about uh, Jesus, come forward. Or if you need a prayer, come forward, and we can do that now, or we can do it after the service. But listen to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit leads you. Amen. Let's stand together. announcement I want to add is uh, our youth will be meeting this Wednesday night, uh, even though 
Logos has ended. Our, our last Logos session was, was last week. and the, 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 to the skating party. Say that again, Kate. Logos is having a skating party, and the youth are invited to come to it. Oh, wonderful. Yes, so there you go. So our, our official Logos was ending this past week, but we're having a special celebration for Logos, and the youth are invited to come uh, 5 to 7. Thank you, Kate. Now go forth in the peace, the love, the joy, and the hope of Jesus Christ, sharing the good news with all that you meet, and use words as necessary and as enabled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah.